Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy another start to the slice hump day. And as someone made a beautiful comment uh, on the earlier video, it is going to also be called the pump day as well. No, pump day was yesterday. Today is, well, a few other things to keep in mind of. So I wanted to come back at the statistical setups that we were looking at for the past uh, 48 hours. Also follow up on the major one that we were looking at over the past, uh, I guess, like nine days now as there's an update there as well. And what else? I think I forgot to wish you the best of us. So wishing you the best of us as always. And once again, humbly requesting that if you do find this content valuable, or if you just need a reminder, <laughs> please do consider like and subscribing. And let's jump into it right here, right now. So I want to start off this analysis first and foremost with the full hour time frame on the HPDR indicator. Why this? Because it has essentially been getting the range highs, range lows, and meeting the range incredibly well. And once again, we do see that the range highs on the 50% of historical returns, this blue zone right here, being respected on yesterday's nice little pump Ola party, of which the same sort of thing still applies. That is to say that as long as Bitcoin is below this region, 22,300 on a closing basis, four hour time frame, there's not really too much to be getting excited for. Now we'll go over a few things in a bit here that do say that there potentially are a few things to be getting excited for, um, but that would be the main thing, kind of like the the confirmation of, you know, of, well, uh, you know, a much greater move to the upside. In this case, you know, looking at the top side of the next range highs, the 80% of historical returns range highs would be around 23, uh, low 23. So Basically, Bitcoin would have kind of free range if it were to close above this current region uh, to trade back up somewhere around the prior range highs. By the same token, big, 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 big pivot here at 21,600. Very fucking important. Below 21,600, this is uh, this is not just like uh, this is not just like a, a failed attempt. It's very likely going to fall much further to the downside, uh, at least to the low 21s and probably lower than that over time. Um, but again, that's, you know, that's still kind of far away. As of right now, Bitcoin's knocking on the door for the upside. Other than that, I wanted to once again follow up on this particular setup. Um, this was uh, th this was something different. I'm curious if people are like interested in seeing this kind of shit. Uh, this is actually how I test my strategies, how I, uh, you know, kind of get simulations on the equity curves over time um, as well as just stats for them um, if I'm not doing them by hand and of course you know when we're talking about a 12-hour time frame I would never trade this myself I don't I don't care to be waiting like so fucking long <laughs> but but basically it is this uh, we spoke about this setup um, on a strategy video maybe like four or five months ago it was basically focused on the 12-hour time or it wasn't focused on any time frame uh, but it was focused on the jewel light indicator and the setup is essentially this as Elsa yaks up in the background don't worry she's fine she's completely fine no problems at all definitely don't call the authorities um but uh, but basically the setup is this anytime that uh the 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 jewel light goes below 35 and then turns white on the first tick initiates a setup alongside the current trend in this case we're going to be uh referencing the daily which makes these statistics over here relevant. So let me just bring them up. Let me make sure that you can actually uh, see them. Okay, yep, there we go. Uh, maybe I can bring them down a little bit. There we go. Uh, now, first and foremost, I want to say very, very clearly, I'm not saying that you're going to see a $300,000 move right there. This is simulated with, uh, with a base position size of $300,000. Um, on an account size of like 400,000, I think was what I ran these uh, tests on. Anyways, what we're really focus focused on is the total amount of closed trades, the percent profitable, and then the average trade. So in this case, it does have a rather high hit rate um, for this one, for, for this particular setup. And I want to be, and I want to once again highlight a point that this is not just a blind trade when uh, when the jewel light condition is met there is a a, a daily trend uh, condition as well so basically when the daily is uptrending then yes uh, then then these statistics apply over here if the daily is not uptrending well we can see uh, they're actually still pretty good I think but not as good yeah um, more 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 trades lower percent profitable so again you know if you're uh, if you're what's it called um, if you're if, if if you're looking for like an easy way to optimize most strategies, use a use a higher term time frame relative to the to, to, to the one that you're currently trading, and it should get you a higher um, a higher hit rate. Anyways, in this case, uh, percent profitable with that particular setup, uh, rather high at 83 spot 33 um, percent. This was uh, running off a test going all the way back to yeah 2019. So for the past three to four years now, um, that has been relevant. 
And next, what I'm most interested in is the amount of uh, the average bars in the trade from when that setup uh, is is basically uh, signaled, to, and also the average trade, which is about five percent. So, uh, so let's oops, let's bring this maybe down because we can't really see. It's like I'm blind; I can't see shit. Um, and let's see. Okay, so days first off, well, this one fired off uh, <laughs> back over here on um, Sunday. Uh, but basically, we are already about, um, what would this be, five bars into this one in an average bars uh, for this particular setup taking about 21. So, you know, if this one does go towards the average, we're probably looking more around like 10 days, uh, which would be way out here. Um, kind of uh, like, what, another week? Uh, yeah, about another week. Um, I would say that, you know, if we are going to see the upside trajectory hit, it's probably going to take less time um, in this particular example because we do have a bit of a catalyst. But uh, but again, looking at the average trade, about 5%. Yeah, so I put Bitcoin, guess where? About 23000 Uh That sounds very, very similar to the next range highs over here on the four-hour time frame. So if you do see that follow through, that would be the next sort of, sort of area of interest that I'd be looking towards. Um, and this would suggest that, yeah, it's uh, it's it's more likely. But here's the thing, this will be invalidated and very likely validate a nice downside move uh, if Bitcoin pops back down and closes again below about 21.6. That's the big one. Um, until then, yeah, uh, probability still favor the upside, I suppose. Um, we've already seen a you know a decent move to the upside, actually. Anyways, uh, moving on here, I wanted to follow up on this particular setup. Speaking of probabilities, this was a daily setup um, that we were looking at with basically low volatility plus direction of stochastic oscillator has led to these stats over here, um, of which we base, we've seen this one now um, uh, resolved, if you will. So what is, uh, what, what is relevant about this? Well, we got pretty close to the bottom side of the first standard deviation at about 12% from the high of this rally to where... Uh, the low was put in, yeah, about 12% right there. So, um, and, and and also it took about, yeah, nine days. So in this case, you know, is it reasonable to to say that, uh, hey, you know, it played within the boundaries of that? Yeah, it was on the lower end, but we kind of expected that based off of the not extreme compression levels of, um, you know, of the daily volatility over here. It wasn't like, it wasn't anything like what we saw on the last major move, which was this compression over here for, you know, which lasted like a couple weeks. So, uh, so yes. Anyways, the new thing is, however, is that a two-day time frame uh, signature is emerging here. Let me just see. I think it's on this chart. Yeah, it's emerging um, as of right, well, not as of right now, but it's starting to, it's starting to become more and more relevant. And so the two-day time frame uh, volatility indicator, uh, the BBWP right here, is getting down very, very close towards 10 percentile. Um, again, you know, this is not going to fire off today, probably not tomorrow. And if it does, it's probably going to be a pretty weak signal. But in this case, you can see that, um, you know, very likely within maybe like the next week or two, uh, the next like seven to 10 days, um, I would say, uh, it's probably going to base off over here and probably set up for another, uh, you know, pretty decent um, uh, signature and, and and probably produce, you know, some pretty impressive price action. In this particular instance, the two-day time frame stochastic loss order is still pivoted to the downside. And I forgot to mention that about the daily. Daily crossed up. Yay. So the other signal, again, nullified. Uh, it's, you know, it's done. It's kaputs. Um, but two-day time frame over here. Uh, remains with downside pressure as long as Bitcoin's below about 23,750. The thing is, we can see a nice, uh, you know, a, you know, a nice uh, trend line regression coming in from the last few major lows. This was September lows, November lows, and January lows over here before, you know, pretty major rallies actually um, would be met. Maybe, yeah, like basically around end of this month. Uh, in like a week, it's probably going to start to base off around that region. So, um, you know, if you do start to see that setup emerge. Well, I'd imagine the pivot over here would, would start to come a lot closer to current price action. And if we are going to see continuation, like a major continuation, um, that's probably the setup that I'd be looking for. Let's go reference now, um, you know, what sort of uh, stats we'd be looking at. Keep it in mind that as long as this has continued to remain to the downside, probabilities actually favor the downside from here. Um, it's just, you know, just as before, it's like, until we actually see that setup emerge, you know, it's, it becomes very, very difficult to uh, to kind of forecast. But, you know, in case of, uh, you know, in the case of an upside move, um, that particular setup has like a 79% uh, strike strike rate. And um, let me make sure I should write an average return right there. 
and an average return of uh, 28%, which is pretty fucking good. Obviously, first standard deviation, um, you know, makes that a little bit more relatable at 17 to 18% on the lower end. Uh, by the same token, if we do see the downside play, which as of right now would be more likely, uh, would be more likely based off of that. Uh, but again, the setup is just not, it's it's not confirmed. Like that's the problem. So it's actually not really more likely right now. I guess that's the wrong way of putting it. What it what would be more accurate to say is like, if this were to fire off right now, then yeah, this would be more accurate. Uh, but it's not, it's not there just yet. So basically, uh, actually has a much higher win rate at 82, a um, little bit above 82 and returns um, on average about 25%. Uh, first standard deviation, pretty similar range, actually. So, you know, if let's just like, like, what if you add 20% on current price action? Where would that put Bitcoin? That puts Bitcoin, uh, mid, you know, mid to lower $25,000 $25, region. What if we shave off uh, 20%? That puts Bitcoin, that puts Bitcoin back down at 17000 bucks. And if it goes back to 17000 bucks, it's time to tar start talking about 10000 bucks. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, that that reminds me, we don't have uh, we we don't have a price scale on the right hand side. I apologize. Um, I can't fix that on this particular uh, on this particular video, or at least not easily. So uh, it's, it it says ten thousand there for, for all of the perma bears, and for all the perma bulls, it says a hundred thousand there. No problems, no worries. Look, you got what you wanted. It doesn't matter anyways because you're fucking blind to the right hand side of the scale to begin with, because it doesn't matter what actually happens on price action. You're just going to believe what you want to believe anyways. In this current case, um, you know, what, what's most likely in the interim? Probably some more sideways. Uh, probably some more sideways. Um, anyways, um, yes, I think that is maybe a good place to be leaving off on this particular video. Maybe we could just quickly go through stochastic momentum over here. I realize one's getting a little bit longer. Um, but daily uh, is pivoted to the upside as long as Bitcoin's above 21.5. So again, if Bitcoin comes below, you know, 21.5, 21.6 region, yeah, at that point you got a big you got a big fucking uh, trap on your hands, and uh, it's time to spread them cheeks again because they're getting clapped. Um, <laughs> where did I learn that one from? I don't know. Uh, Twelve hour time frame uh, showing upside momentum as long as Bitcoin's above twenty one six fifty. Six hour time frame. Uh, six hour time frame looks like a rejection. Uh, we'll turn back down below twenty one uh, nine or so. So that would be a, a a position, or sorry, that that would be a pivot to the downside, suggesting that we're probably going to see a retest. Um, you know, around current range lows, which would obviously put the higher term time frame setups in jeopardy. Four hour time frame, current pivot is 21,930. Uh, so again, you know, issues below there. Hourly time frame is going to be downside angled below 22,2. So very, very short term. Does Bitcoin try a little bit of downside? Yes. Um, does it start to, you know, violate some of the pivots up to the four hour and six hour? That's where things maybe get a little more tricky. And, um, and you could actually see this one having a nice little tumble. Um, until then, you know, until then, uh, until then, you know, I, I figure we're probably still ranging here, honestly. Um, so that's a good place for me to shill the old Bybit. They got their 0% maker fees on derivative contract orders for 30 days. Read the fine print on it, uh, as always. Um, and uh, what else? Uh, yeah. I'd like to wish you the best of best, as always. Take care. Much love. And see you, hopefully, soon.